Oh man, I stumbled across this this morning and I knew that I had to do today's video on this. Before I get into it though, check out my Mobro page. I have shaved everything and I am growing a Mo for Movember. It is raising funds for our cancer research around prostate cancer. So specifically for men, please go and head over and donate a dollar or two if you can. If all, every single one of my subscribers donated one dollar, we would raise $11,000 towards this fantastic cause. Anyway, guys, a wonderful person with a with a great future. Great future. Magistrate praises Aboriginal activist, 20 years old, who has assaulted police, not once, not twice, not three times, four times this year already, and called them white dogs as she walks free from court. Again, you can't make this shit up, guys. An Aboriginal activist who admitted assaulting police for the fourth time this year has been described by a magistrate as a wonderful young person with a bright future. Leilani Clark has now pleaded guilty to spitting on police officers three times in less than 12 months and has a history of calling them white dogs. The 20-year-old walked free from Downing Centre local court on Friday without so much as a conviction for another assault upon police. Magistrate Aaron Kennedy said assaulting police was an extremely serious offence, but accepted Clark had mental health issues and had possibly been self-medicating with illegal drugs. You guessed it, breaking the law again. Who would have thought? Um, the worst thing we are seeing happening to wonderful people like this is what the magistrate said to this chick. The worst thing we see happening to wonderful people like you who have a great future ahead of them is if you don't get the proper treatment and you start ta taking something to self-medicate and we lose you. Ms. Kennedy said, oh, a female judge, what a surprise. Let's not see you back in here. Clark, who was studying environmental science at Sunshine Coast University, but now lives in Sydney, has spent much of this year in in and out of courts after repeatedly assaulting police. So this isn't her first offence. So when that female judge said, let's not see you back in here, this is probably the fourth time she's said that now, but yet she keeps seeing her back in here. Do you think her behaviour is going to change with no punishment? No. Nah. She is a member of the Butchula Indigenous Community on Queensland's Fraser, Fraser Coast and has previously aspired to organising a festival of her culture. Or if she actually did that instead of just aspiring to do it, I'd actually have a bit more respect for her. Cl I hope you're sitting down for this one, guys. Get ready for this shit. Clark claims to suffer from self-diagnosed transgenerational trauma passed down through the indigenous part of her DNA. So apparently, because she's part Aboriginal, her indigenous ancestors from maybe four or five generations ago who suffered from hardships and, and trauma, she's now suffering from that same trauma because it was passed down to her from uh, transgenerationally through her DNA. That's right. Two days before, she most recently spat on a policeman. She had need another officer in the testicles. Hmm. Placebo effect, indeed, regarding that transgenerational trauma. Hey, Miggy. The accused has a previous charge for assaulting police and resisting arrest. A statement of facts about Clark's latest offence warned. At the time of the offence, the accused was on bail for similar offences for assaulting police and resisting arrest. Police last encountered Clark when they attended reports of a domestic disturbance at Forest Lodge in the city. Sorry about that, guys. The, um, the van overheated because this aircon sucks in the van, so please, apologies for the, um, it's just very hot here today. Anyway. They found Clark outside a terrace on the footpath in an agitated state and noted she had enlarged pupils. Police were at the time of a firm belief that the accused was affected by an illicit substance 
which may have sent her into a drug-induced mental health episode, the statement of facts said. An ambulance arrived and when officers told Clark she would be taken to hospital involuntarily under the Mental Health Act, she became, you guessed it, even more aggressive. The accused attempted to walk away from police and ambulance officers and started screaming requesting to speak to an Aboriginal liaison officer, aka the person that's paid by the government to help Aboriginal people get out of trouble when they get into it, the statement of facts said. As she was being secured to a stretcher, Clark spat on the shoulder of a policeman. Two days earlier, Clark had kneed another officer in the testicles and spat at police when she was caught stealing a $7 chicken curry from a 7-Eleven convenience store at Marrickville. Police at that scene described Clark's behavior as, you guessed it, highly erratic and unpredictable. She's called them white dogs. In April, Clark pleaded guilty to Queensland's Harvey Bay Magistrates Court to assaulting and obstructing police, drug possession, and being a public nuisance. In March, she assaulted a paramedic. You know, those people that are trained in medical uh, procedures to help you when you're in harm's way. But hey, let's just assault them, shall we? Um, she assaulted a paramedic and screamed, Fuck you, white dogs! After being found asleep outside a shop in Annandale around 4 a.m. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be sleeping outside a shop in Annandale at 4 a.m. unless I was under the influence of some sort of illegal drugs, which it sounds like she probably was given her past history. While being restrained in an ambulance, she spat on a police officer's forearm. And in January, Clark attacked police and security guards in a Harvey Bay nightclub while drunk later telling a female officer, Fuck off, you slut! Charming. Clark had wanted an adjournment on Friday to seek medical reports so she could get away with even more stuff. But Ms. Kennedy since said she was ready to sentence her. She was clearly having a psychotic episode, Ms. Kennedy said. She's getting some help. Clark told the court she had recently completed a hospitality course having deferred her university studies. Wait, hold on a moment. Deferred her university studies? I thought she said the last time she got caught that she had three degrees to try and make the police officer look like an idiot. Go and check out my other video that I did on this chick in the description below underneath my MoPro link. But I just find it very interesting how when she was talking to a police officer trying to prove how much better she was than the police officer, she had three university degrees, but now it turns out she's just done a whole hospitality course, probably a barista course, having deferred her university studies. That all seems amazing, but you've got to stay on top of your mental health, Ms. Kennedy said to this female and to no male ever. Clark told the court she had recently, com hang on, do not self-medicate. You need support. Just make sure you say no. You won't take illicit substances. Ms. Kennedy put Clark on a 10 month good behavior bond without recording a single conviction. Without recording a single conviction. So she assaults four police officers, spits on them, knees one in the balls, tells a female officer to fuck off you slut when she was just doing her job, assaults security guards, and is taking illegal drugs, and is trying to use medical reports and Aboriginal liaison officers to get herself off with a pussy pass, which she got anyway without any of that, because vagina. So, uh, guys, what do you think of the conviction handed out by Ms. Erin Kennedy, the female magistrate? I think it's pretty bullshit myself, but I'd love to get your thoughts in the comments. So leave those thoughts in the comments after this video. Smash that thumbs up, guys. I really appreciate it when you smash that thumbs up and comment and share this video with other people who think it's bullshit that women are getting pussy passes left, right, and center. If you want to get one of these Sydney shirts, the reason I have my belt on is because otherwise the van screams at me that I don't have the belt on while I have the van running. So if you want to get one of these shirts, represent.com below. If you want to donate, paypal.me slash sydneymigtail or patreon.com slash sydneymigtail. 
but for the month of November, um, if you're going to give a dollar or two, I'd much rather you donate it to Movember so we can try and fight prostate cancer together as men. Check out my Mobro link below. I'm pasting, posting daily photos, including one where I missed a, missed a spot below when I was actually shaving. So I had like this, this mad strip of hair down the back and all the rest was shaved. It was pretty funny, actually. If it's not on there, drop, drop a donation and comment that it's not there. Uh, and I will make sure to uh, share that picture elsewhere. Anyway, guys, I'm out of here for now. Appreciate you all tuning in. Um, I look forward to catching you in the next video. But until then, peace.